Hi, I'm Dr. Kyle Montgomery, and in this video we'll be looking at doing some analysis on a basic circuit that, Im that involves uh, all of our main uh, circuit elements. Uh, we have a current or a voltage source, rather, some resistors, a capacitor, and an inductor. And if we're given this circuit and we're told specifically that we're already at the DC steady state condition, um, then the question is, what are each of these variables that we've indicated, I, V, C, I sub L? And then also asking what, uh, what amount of uh, energy is stored in both the capacitor and the inductor itself. Um, so the first step to doing, to being able to solve for these variables that we have here would be to apply the principles that we know of what it means to be at the DC steady state condition. So for the capacitor, um, recall that if we're at the DC steady state condition, the capacitor can be treated more or less like an open circuit because again, we know that the uh, current in the capacitor is related to any changes in voltage and because there's no change in voltage, there can't be any current flow through there. So it's more or less acting like an open circuit. Then similarly, or, or in the opposite case for the uh, inductor here, we know that the inductor can be treated as simply a short circuit under the steady state condition because of the fact that we know that there's no change in voltage across that, or no change in current rather, therefore they can, there can be no voltage induced across that inductor. Uh, zero voltage across an inductor means it's basically acting like a short circuit. So I'm just gonna take a brief minute to then, we can just kind of redraw this circuit uh, by taking out that capacitor, putting a short across the inductor, that'll help our analysis go a little bit uh, smoother as it were. Okay, so now having put the open circuit in the place of our capacitor here and put a short circuit in place of our inductor, which again, we can do that because we know that we're under the steady state condition. Um, now it's just a question of we have some resistors in series it looks like with a voltage source. So first question might be, what is this current I that's traveling out from the source? Well, so we know that um, this actually is a little bit even of an easier analysis because, because of the fact that there's an open circuit in this middle branch, we know that there cannot be any current flow through that middle branch. So this four ohm resistor is not gonna impact anything related to the current I over here. So here we just have basically a single loop of current flow uh, through the one ohm and the five ohm resistor. So basically here we can just apply Ohm's law to calculate what our current I would be where this would simply be 12 volts is the total voltage drop across the two resistors. And this is a total of six ohms where I'm simply adding the one and the five ohm resistor here to give me a current flow of two amps. Okay. Now knowing that that current I is two amps and knowing that there, again, there's no current flow down the middle branch, well then we certainly of course know what the current would be through that inductor because the inductor is sitting over here in this branch. So it would have to be the same as I, so that would also be uh, two amps as it were. Um, okay, so now if we're asked what, what is the voltage across that capacitor, which again, the, the capacitor in, in reality is still sitting here in the circuit. It's just, um, it's acting or behaving as an open circuit. So that's how we're doing our analysis. But there would still be some voltage built up across that capacitor um, because of the fact that we're already at steady state, so it's already been fully charged as it were. So what is the voltage here? Well, to sort of answer that question, we could basically apply a KVL type of, ex of equation, a relationship, um, let's say around the loop with the five ohm resistor. So imagine just drawing a path around here as such. Well, again, there's no voltage drop across the four ohm resistor, right? Because there's no current flow here. So the only voltage drop, the only two voltages I have in this path that I've just drawn is the drop across this five ohm resistor plus to minus and then the drop across the VC as indicated here. So in other words, I can just uh, simply say that VC is going to be equal. It must be the same as the voltage drop across that five ohm resistor. So that would just be, again, by applying Ohm's law, five ohms times the amount of current that's traveling through that resistor would be two amps, thereby giving me a voltage of 10 volts. Okay. And, you know, again, we'd have to, you know, always want to pay attention to how the polarity is indicated. So if this was opposite, if it was minus to plus, then this would actually need to be negative. Again, that's, we can um, illustrate that or prove that by just thinking about what K K the KVL equation would tell us around that part of the circuit, okay? Um, all right, so we found those primary currents and the voltages. Now, using these, the voltage across the capacitor and the current through the inductor, we can be able to find the amount of energy stored in each of those elements. Let me take a quick minute to erase this here, and then we'll just walk through those uh, equations. 
Okay, so talking about first the energy stored in the capacitor, W uh, sub C, uh, we know that our relationship for the capacitor would be one half um, C VC squared, okay, where again VC we've already found determined to be 10 volts, okay. So basically then just plugging in, let's see, we've got one half, the capacitance itself is just one farad, the voltage again 10 volts, that quantity squared. Um, should just end us up with 50 joules here, okay? So th these uh, points here are pretty straightforward, just kind of plugging in some numbers here to get to the quantities. Similarly, we know that the energy stored in an inductor is equal to one-half of the inductance L times the current through the inductor squared, so one-half Li squared. So again, plugging in the respective values, we know L is this two Henry's as indicated here, times the current through my inductor is two amps, that quantity squared. Uh, so here we should end up with a total of four joules. Okay. Okay. And so then that tells us, again, these are the amount of energy that we have stored. Again, remember that capacitors and inductors are able to store energy just in the same respect as, as what a battery can do. They just kind of behave a little bit differently in the transient response. And so based on the voltage source that's applied here, that's basically as it is initially tied into the capacitor and inductor, it's charging up those elements to the, once we've reached the steady state condition, to these values of 50 joules for the capacitor and four joules for the inductor, all right? Um, so again, just a quick recap. Whenever you're looking at a circuit, you already know that it's at the steady state condition. Treat your capacitors as open circuits. Treat your inductors as short circuits. And then just do the analysis using any known techniques that you have already for working with resistors and the given sources you have. Uh, that's all for this video. Hope to see you on the next one.